Welcome to Chez Jeunesse, the place of new beginnings. My name is Catherine Hubert, and I founded and own a French-inspired cafe where, as a team, we are on a mission to change the way our world views and employs adults with disabilities. Our restaurant was born and is based in Greensboro, North Carolina, and that's where we practice and teach our mission and model. This is our channel where we dive in deep to who we are, what we do, and why we do it. Our hope is that this content is empowering to disabled and non-disabled humans alike, and that no matter what perspective you are coming from, whether that's employer, employee, parent, friend, or Shazen S fan, you feel welcomed, you learn something new, and you walk away with a deeper appreciation and understanding of humanity. Hey everybody, welcome back. I am excited today to be diving into part one of two. It wasn't originally gonna be split this way, but there's enough content, I think, that we need to split it into two videos. So part one of two of disability employment myths, things that you may believe about disability employment or that you have heard from other people, and we want to dispel some of those myths. A lot of these are things that we hear or encounter somewhat regularly at Chez Jeunesse, whether that's through workshops that we teach or guests that we have come in, just conversations that we're having with the public. And that's why we're here. Or one of the reasons why we're here is that we want to change the way that people view and think about disabilities and disability employment. So we're going to talk about the myths, the things that we believe that we can let go of that we do not need to believe anymore. So I'm gonna go over four of those today and then we'll do four again in the next part in part two. These are not in necessarily any particular order either. I should preface that. We've just compiled a list as a team and I'm going to go through them, but I'm not ranking this in like this is the one that we hear the most or we're just, we're just going for it. So number one is that it is not safe for a disabled person to work in a commercial kitchen. This is something that I've gotten pretty consistently since before Chez Jeunesse even existed, just when I was telling people about the idea of the business, the assumption is usually made that we employ people with disabilities for our service team, but that we do not have anyone with a disability who works on our back of house or our kitchen team because a commercial kitchen is just too dangerous for someone with a disability. That is a myth. That is not true. On multiple accounts, one, we hire people with disabilities across our whole team. So both the front of house and the back of house but two, disability doesn't really have anything to do with how safe the kitchen environment is. That absolutely has to do with the training and the practices and the setup of the kitchen. So all of our staff go through a training process. We talk about kitchen safety. We talk about knife skills and safety. We go through sanitation and safety. So that, the, the safety factor of a kitchen very much has to do with the leadership of the business, with the training practices that are involved and enforced, the trainings that are offered and like the extra kind of curricular trainings or developments that are offered to the staff. And then just the monitoring and making sure that not only are we training our team, but then we're following up on those training practices and making sure that everyone stays safe at work. So. That's myth number one. Number two is that people with autism either can't work or at the least don't thrive in environments of high stress or high stimulus. They get oftentimes surprises people that we're a restaurant and that we employ people with disabilities and that we have people with autism who work on our team. This again is a myth. We do have an area available for our team that's like a staff area that's kind of out of the basic restaurant space and that's a great space if someone is feeling overstimulated and they need a quick break or a pause from kind of the motion and the stress of the restaurant but this is available for our whole team I exercised this today <laughs> even I came into work today and it just was a lot kind of all at once I felt like I got hit with a lot of questions there were there's a bunch of broken glass out behind the restaurant, I think left over from Halloween night last night. And for whatever reason, I just felt that internally and I could tell that I was getting overwhelmed and that the more like questions or comments I was fielding, the more overwhelmed I was. 
getting and so I just pulled away for a second and I went into my office and I shut my door and I worked on something quietly until I felt my you know nervous system kind of re-regulate and I was like okay I can open my door again I'm going to go back out so again it's not disability specific but we do want to provide spaces for people to feel like they can get what they need that they feel safe and they feel comfortable at work but absolutely a person with autism is not limited to working in environments that are low stress or low stimulus. My teammates with autism have already developed before they worked here or have developed while they're working here. Great stress management techniques. And yeah, our amazing restaurant employees and handle the hustle and the bustle of everything that's going on quite well. Number three, disabilities only count if they are visible. We have talked here a little bit before about visible disabilities versus invisible disabilities. It's pretty apparent what those things are, I think. But just to go over that again briefly, a visible disability is something that you could see with the naked eye. This is a lot of times what people think about when they think about disabilities. So someone being in a wheelchair, someone having Down syndrome, something that you can see and that registers pretty quickly with your mind as a disability. And sometimes we get comments about, do you still hire people with disabilities? Because a lot of our teammates have invisible disabilities, which means it's something that's happening internally on more of a neurological level. And so that's not visible. I can't, I can't see someone's brain and how it's operating or how that's impacting emotional regulation, et cetera, social development. So we want to just raise some awareness about that that there are a lot of disabilities that you can't see, and at the end of the day, it honestly doesn't matter <laughs> to you as the consumer if someone has a disability or if they don't, and it's certainly not appropriate to ask someone that. But it doesn't, just because you can't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist and it doesn't make it any less valid. It, it certainly still counts. And then our last one for the day, point number four, is that there's an assumption or myth that because we hire people with disabilities, we as a business must experience hardships that businesses who hire non-disabled employees do. A lot of times when we do workshops, one of the questions, or when I speak places, one of the questions that I get asked a lot is what is the hardest part about our business model? What is the hardest part about, I just realized this is big and poking up the whole time. Apologies for that. What's the hardest part about hiring people with disabilities? What challenges do we experience, etc.? And I think that while that question is coming from a place of curiosity, and I definitely encourage and applaud curiosity, it still has a negative understanding or connotation of disability and the level of impact that that brings into someone's world either personally or on a more collective whole. And it can reduce or take away some of the humanity of the person with a disability and, and seeing them for disability purposes only. So my encouragement in that is to just say that the challenges that I face as a business owner have much more to do with the fact that we are a small business, that we are a restaurant, that we walked through a pandemic <laughs> and economic craziness, and that we employ people. Like that that's the part that I think I I want people to walk away with and to understand is that there are always going to be things that are hard or that you find challenging as a leader of people. And that's not because people are bad or because working with humans is bad. I love humans and I love everything that comes with being a human and all the goodness and all the messiness. But you're, you're working with people who do have, like every person's different. So you are going to run into just a lot of different circumstances, scenarios, needs, goals, stressors life experiences, perspectives, medical needs, time and scheduling needs, like there's just a lot of different things that fall under the umbrella of employing humans. And 
And that, that is not unique to someone with a disability. That is broad to humanity as a whole. And it doesn't become, oh, it's easy to hire people who don't have disabilities, and it's hard to hire people who do have disabilities. It's, if I'm paying attention and I care about my team and I'm willing to invest in them and I want to know them as an individual, that is going to push me and challenge me as a leader. I'm going to have to work on my empathy. I'm going to have to work on my listening skills. I'm going to have to work on my sense of compassion for myself and for other people. I'm going to need to be attentive and pay attention to details. There are so many different aspects of who I am and my character and my personality, and that that is not disability specific. So that's what I have for you today. I'm going to sign off. Thanks for being here. We'll pick it up next week. I'm not sure if we'll do part two next week. We may do that a little bit later, or we may jump around and do it. I got to honestly look back at my calendar and my schedule because we improvised a little bit today. But happy November. Happy last couple of months of the year. I can't believe it. It feels like it's gone by so quickly. Thank you to everyone who celebrated five years with us last week. We love you. It was amazing. Thanks for being part of our journey. And if you would help us spread the word by subscribing, liking, sharing, commenting, all of those things, that would be wonderful. Our goal (laughs) this year was to hit a thousand subscribers on YouTube, which we will not meet. And that is okay. But maybe we could get to 300. So if you would like to help us meet our new revised goal, that would be amazing. Thanks again. Followers. It's my baby Annette. Can I get a shout out? Yo, yo. <laughs> Join us on YouTube.